Just a quick recap before we move forward with our passive interface labs. We know that we went on router 1, made Fast Ethernet 00 a passive interface, and that network segment was still successfully advertised, and we stopped sending hellos out that particular interface. No reason to send the hellos because there's no device there that needs them. But things change, and we fear change, but we do have to handle it. And let's just say it could be three months later, six months later, three years later, and this network gets redone a bit. The topology gets moved around, and all of a sudden, instead of a bunch of devices that can't form an OSPF adjacency with Router 1, we suddenly have one that we would like to add to Area 0 here in our OSPF deployment. And the thing is, especially if they're not CCNAs and they didn't take my course, some people, some network admins, might not know what's going on with Fast Ethernet 00. They might not notice it as far as being a passive interface. Let's say you did it one day and you've moved on to a better job. They came in behind you and you know, so it never really came into play until Router 5 gets at it. And, you know, they just go to Router 5 and let me uh, obviously move that up a little bit. Sorry about that. And we'll check our connectivity first. Always a good place to start, so we're good there. And conf2, router OSPF1 network, 210, 0, 0255, area 0. And uh, that would be it. You know, not exactly a complicated OSPF deployment there. We know exactly what's going on. But they could sit here for a while and be thinking, well, why aren't I getting an adjacency? And they run, maybe I didn't get a console message. I'll run show IP OSPF neighbor and I didn't get anything, and you ping 10.1.1.1 about 50 more times, and you have connectivity. And then sooner or later, that network admin is going to have to ask somebody, hopefully you, you know, hey, I've got this weird thing going on. You know, I'm pinging across a broadcast segment, and it comes back just fine. There are no other commands necessary for a broadcast segment. I don't care who the DRBDR is, but I'm not even getting an election going on but everything seems to be okay over there on router one. They could even look at the config, and if they don't happen to notice passive interface fast zero zero under the OSPF config, they're not gonna know what's going on, but you do. So in this particular case, we could debug IP OSPF hello if you just came straight in. And I'm showing you that command a lot, but it comes in handy. So we see that the hellos are going out to 224.005. That's what we expect on a broadcast segment and we see exactly where they're coming from. And 10 seconds or so later, we see another one, and we're gonna keep seeing them. Nothing is coming in, and when you see this on a potential adjacency, the ping is working. So the remote interface has to be up and running. You know, it's gotta be fine. But when you see this output, you've got a pretty darn good idea what's going on, and that's that someone made that interface over on the other router passive. Let's go over and fix that. And to take care of that to make this a non-passive interface just put the word no in front of it i mentioned it a couple times i just use the up arrow up and down arrows to go through the history control a moves you to the front of the line you just type the word no in put a space and you're ready to go so uh, oh <laughs> that did not take long and you can see that adjacency came right up with router 5 and it's gone from loading to full loading done everything looks good there Let's go over to router 5. Whoops, pardon me. Should be better than that by now. Let's try that again. Router 5. I love inventing new keyboard shortcuts as I go along. And you can see 172.12.123.0 would appear as an OSPF router on router 5 because router 5 is not directly connected to it. And all is well. So that's all there is to it. Now, there's one thing I mentioned to you earlier. I talked about it, but I want to show it to you. And that's using the passive interface default command and how you can um, how you can make it the default for your router, but then go around and say, okay, I needed this interface open, that kind of thing. Let's revisit our network here. And let's say that we've got several other interfaces on router one. And we've got loopbacks we want to make passive. We've got other fast ethernet connections. We want to make them all passive. But obviously, we don't want to make serial 10 passive because we know what's going to happen there, right? We're going to lose our adjacency as soon as we do that. I don't even think the dead time would even have to expire. I think just making that interface passive, whammo, you're not going to have any adjacencies. So let's see what might happen if you go with no passive interface serial 10 and then passive interface default. 
okay, you're going to lose those adjacencies anyway. That's what I expected. Uh, what you've got to do, see, by default, none of the interfaces are passive. So putting in no passive interface serial 10 before passive interface default is not going to negate the passive interface status of serial 01, serial 10. You've got to do it after you make that the default. So you would just simply go no passive interface serial 10 here. And the adjacency, you start, you'll see a temp down. And let's run show IP estimator. That's going to take, of course, a couple of minutes to come up. But you can see the neighbor ID of router 2 has already been read. That's already in two-way state. And I will pause the video until the adjacencies come up. But so many times, if you're entering two commands, the order of them really doesn't matter. But here we saw live that it did. This interface was already not passive because that is the default on a Cisco router. So entering that command really didn't have any effect yet. And as soon as we put in passive interface default, that made everybody passive. It even made the one we just made non-passive passive, -passive uh, over there leading to neighbor five. So now we've gone no passive interface serial one zero, and we should see those two adjacencies coming back. You can see they're already in two way. We should see them come back fully while the one to router five is gonna stay lost until we make that non-passive. Matter of fact, I'll do that while we're waiting. Because you could certainly have a situation where you have 12 interfaces and maybe you just wanna make these two non-passive. As soon as you make that passive, I think that adjacency is gonna come back pretty quick and there it already is. And we will just wait with bated breath or some other kind for those two-way adjacencies to finish up. And there we go. It always takes a minute or two, but we did finally get those adjacencies back up over our cloud. And now everything is where it was before with those no passive interface commands. So again, watch the order of making it a default and then negating passive interface on certain interfaces. You want to do passive interface default first and then go in with no passive interface and use that on the interfaces you need them. You need them on. Man, that's a lot with one little feature, right? I mean, one little command, but now we know where to use it, where not to use it, exactly what it does, where to configure it, how to troubleshoot it, and how to verify it as well. So take a breather. You have earned it. a lot of passive interface information here, and we'll move on to another OSPF subject coming up next.